Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to PG Plus Limited Q3 FY24 earnings conference call hosted by JM Financial. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. Certain statements in this release concerning our future growth prospects are forward-looking statements which involve a number of risks and uncertainties that could cause our actual results to differ materially from those in such forward-looking statements. We will now undertake to update any forward-looking statement that may be made from time to time by us or on our behalf. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Deepak Agarwal from JM Financial. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thanks. Good afternoon, all. On behalf of JM Financial, I welcome you all to PG Electroplast Q3 FY24 Earning Call. Today we have with us senior management represented by Mr. Vishal Gupta, MD Financial, Mr. Vikas Gupta, MD Operations, and Mr. Pramod Gupta, Chief Financial Officer. Without taking much of time, I would like to hand over the floor to the management for their opening remarks, post which we will open the floor for QA. Thanks and over to you, sir. The line for Vishal Gupta has been disconnected. We will please wait while we reconnect. Yeah, good, good afternoon. The management line is very connected. Yeah, thank you, Deepak. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for your time and joining this call today. Hope all of you are doing well. I'm joined on this call by Mr. Pramod Gupta, our Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Vidas Gupta, our MD Operation. We have already shared our results presentation, and so we have had the opportunity to go through the same. Nine months of this financial year has been another strong period for us. Good growth over last financial year numbers. Uh, there is a lot of noise in the background. Uh, Hello. Hello. Noise in the background. Yes, yes I'm just checking. You need to put all the people on the mute. Yeah. Management can continue the... Uh, yeah, the thank you. Yeah. So, nine months of this financial year has been another strong period for PG. With good growth over last financial year numbers, sales have grown 26% in this period and have crossed 1,665 crore rupees, with its product business growing at 23%. Abhika has also increased by 50% and stands at... 155 crore rupees, while net profits have risen by 75% and stands at 65 crore rupees. Product business in these nine months have crossed 888 crores in FY24, with Room AC business contributing 641 crore rupees, which is a 29% growth on a YOY basis. The washing machine business has grown at 230, it stands at 234 crore rupees and has grown by 11% on YOY basis. 
electronic business, which includes LED television business, was at 277 crore rupees and grew at 112 percent. Order book for product business remains robust, and the company is on track to scale the product business significantly in FY24. Company is continuing its investment in new product platforms across all product segments. and we are focusing our efforts towards developing products that help us maintain cost leadership while we also strive to attain product leadership the company continues to see increased interest for businesses from new and existing clients and we remain very confident on the future growth prospects of the business for the ongoing quarter that is the fourth quarter of fy24 we are guiding for a strong 30% growth with a sales guidance for this quarter at 175 crore rupees which is a growth of 30% over fourth quarter of fy23 and ebitda guidance of 100 crores which is a growth of 30% over the same quarter of fy23 which was at 77 crore rupees the growth in product business that is washing machines room air conditioner and air cooler is expected to be around 40% at 870 crore rupees so overall sales for this quarter we are guiding at 175 crore rupees one oh, sorry 1075 crore rupees and the capex guidance stands in the range of 170 to 180 crore rupees for fy24 and the major capex has been completed with new room ac plant operational in diwali in rajasthan and expansion of creating a new building of 300 lakh square feet a 3 lakh square feet in suba maharashtra has been also completed and our flagship manufacturing facility for led television under jv of goodworth electronics spread across 300000 square foot area is also more or less ready and we are ready for mass production from next month With this, I will now hand over call to my colleague, Mr. Pramod Gupta, our CFO. He will elaborate on the financials. Thank you. Hello and uh, good evening, everyone. I'm sure uh, you've seen the financials in detail already. I'm just coming up here. We had a good third quarter in many aspects. The net sales for the quarter uh, grew by 16% YY, despite sharp drop in commodity prices on a uh, full year basis. EBITDA grew 23.1% to 47 crore and net profit grew 40% to 19.23 crores. During third quarter, operating margins moderated due to mixed change as lower margin electronic business grew much faster than the overall sales growth. Coming to the balance sheet, we have utilized QIP proceeds to partly repay the debt, both uh, term as well as the working capital. Also, we have completed the capex. um and also we uh, now have a gross debt of 263 crores much reduced from the uh, beginning of the year and cash and bank balance of 164 crores we are on track to control our working capital as promised and in 2024 working capital optimization remains one of the major focus area for the company our, our focus on improving capital efficiency is bearing fruit now and on tra- trading 12 month basis the capital efficiency of the business has improved and our roc today stands at 19.8% and roe was 16% post capital raise for the trailing 12 months net fixed asset turn for the consolidated entity is at 4.45x which we think we will improve further next year our cash conversion cycle has lengthened lengthened in this quarter due to a strategic call by the management to pay around 12 million dollars as an advance to oversee vendors for better pricing for the coming ac season we have recently signed a definitive agreement to acquire 100% stake in new generation manufacturing which is a private limited company and a 100% subsidiary of amstead consumer india private limited we will be paying 15 crore and 1 lakh for the 100% equity and ccd to ac ipl further we will invest 50 crores in acpi acipl in the form of equity and debt to 
pay the ICDs and long-term loans in NGM. After that, the NGM will become free from all encumbrances. <clears throat> Say NGM has 12 acres of land, which is just across our factory in uh, PGTL, and also it has over 200,000 square feet shed built with some assembly lines for room AC and LED TV. With this, now I would like to open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Vipra Srivastava from Incred Research. Please go ahead. I am an audible. Yes. Okay. So uh, basically, first question on your window AC facility. So uh, you are uh, planning that facility is of around 360, 300,000 units, right? Yes. And uh, the, the total window AC sold has been constant for some time. That's around 1.1 million units. So this right. is 30 percent of the existing market. So uh, just want to understand that was this being done in house and the company is outsourcing it to you, or will you be taking this market share from fellow EMS players? So basically, uh, see, uh, see, most of the brands who are selling window ACs in India, they outsource. They don't manufacture in house, barring one or two brands, right? And uh, see, we are not. Uh, I think maybe somewhere we made, maybe. 300,000 window AC, I don't think we have, uh, you know, forecasts that we'll be selling. We are targeting to sell window ACs and we have researched, we are going to start manufacturing next week. So, this year, we may not be actually uh, targeting a very significant market share in this uh, product segment, but definitely maybe 10 to 15 percent of the market share we are hoping to get in the first year of operations. I don't think we have uh, said 300,000 window issues in any of the statements given by us. Right. Also, also please appreciate, also yeah, please yeah. appreciate this capacity is on annual basis which you are talking about. Yeah. And being a seasonal business, even in the best of the case, the capacity utilization never goes up more than 60, 65 percent. So that's the capacity. That's not what we are targeting to have right now. Okay, noted, noted. So even if you, let's say, plan to take away, uh, let's say, at 60% utilization and 300,000, 30% of the market. So even if you, let's say, take, uh, take 10 to 12% of the market, so the market will take it from fellow, fellow EMS players, right? Will that be easy? I am saying 10 to 15 percent of the market we are targeting for the first year. I just want to understand, sir. Will you be able to take that share from fellow EMS players? What will be your pitch to them? Uh, because uh, how will you differentiate yourself from, let's say, Umbar or EPAC? We have shown and demonstrated that already in the split AC, and we are already having a very sizable market share today. Uh, and and the num players you named, uh, we we are actually uh, closing on in the market share with both of them in terms of uh, split AC, and we see no reason why we will not be able to repeat that in the window AC. Right. But in the split AC, it was more about import substitution, right? A lot of China, ACs from China were being imported. That has currently become almost too close to 1 to 2 percent. So, but fine. The market the was open for the competition also, no? They were the okay, okay. earlier entry, earlier and uh, players who were already there in that still okay, became no the market no. share, no? Not at all. No, no, no. Understand? We are the latest. We are the last entrant in the RAC uh, segment in the in RAC industry. We are the last person to enter, and still no, we have gained significant market share with all in in the presence of all these competitions which was already there. Okay, noted. Uh, last question on the TV part. So, Zaina uh, uh, currently has Carbon and Century as brands, and you also you have got Amstrad. 
So, uh, I mean, uh, your future as a TV manufacturer will be closely linked with the future of these brands, right? Let's say hypothetically, if these brands lose market share in future, then it will lead to your TV utilization, uh, TV facility running at low utilization. Is this understanding correct? No, that understanding is not correct. The reason being is that we are not creating this facility only for these brands. They will be also our clients and we will be targeting other clients also. By the way, this year we are having a very high growth in the TV and there are many more other brands which are contributing to the uh, to the growth apart from Sansui and Amstad or whoever you named. Right, but then Dixon has the largest facility, right? Around it has around fifty six percent of the market as facility. So you again, have to visit our facility, please, and then you please comment whether who has the highest or best or whatever facility. I will invite you maybe in the two weeks later or maybe in the first week of March. Come and visit our facility, and then you can. No, no, I am just talking about plain numbers. Nine point four million units of TVs were sold last year. Dixon has a facility of six point six million units. I'm just talking plain numbers. So Dixon has 66% of the market. So what I'm saying is, how will you differentiate from Dixon? And let's say saying that you guys have some value proposition which Dixon doesn't have, so that people should come and get their TVs manufactured from you. Please understand, we don't want to comment on the competition. Okay. We know about our capabilities and what kind of value proposition we can bring to our clients. <laughs> Dixon has been there for long, and in last one year, we have grown our business in TV uh, by more than 100 percent, which has already been highlighted by Mr. Pramod Gupta while sharing the numbers. And we are still confident going forward. We are already adding quite a few new clients, and we are confident of uh, uh, having a rapid growth in the in the FI25 also for our TV business. We are already adding certain clients which we cannot disclose right now. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Deepak Krishnan from Kotak Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, so I hope you can hear me fine. I just wanted to check on ACs. Our top end for this quarter is uh, down about 5%. We would have done about 185 crores versus 194 crores last year. The brands have shown, you know, 30% plus growth. Any reason why, you know, audience are showing such lower growth as compared to brands? Yeah, there is a reason that the reason is that uh, some of most of the brands were carrying little inventory because there was an unseasonal rain in May and June, and uh, there was a lot of uh, built up which happened during uh, the January, February, March last year, and that inventory was being carried by brands, and they have just uh, kind of uh, got rid of their inventory because the season off season sales were very strong. Also, one more thing I want to highlight here. See, the, the capacity in the system has increased. And because of that, what has happened is that the seasonality in the business has increased further. So earlier, the clients which used to get their manufacturing started sometime in November, December, now they have pushed it more and aligned with the sales that they do to the uh, their dealer and distributor. So right now, if you see, uh, for most of the, the 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 contract manufacturers, the sale is going to be much higher in January to April May period than what it used to be in the past because everybody knows that there is no dearth of capacity, so they don't need to make it. They, they don't need to build the inventories from November itself. So that also is one of the reasons why, because of which the sales has actually shifted in the AC side. In our case, also one of the reasons is, I'll tell you, one of the reasons for decline is also the ASTs. Average selling price for most of the consumer durable items at contract manufacturing site are down anywhere between 5 to 11% in the last one year or last two quarters at our end. And that is also the reason why the overall sales look little lower. Because commodity prices have corrected. Like, for example, plastic is down almost by 12% on a year-on-year -year basis. Copper is down 8%. Aluminium is down about 10%. So, because of those things, 
the prices of average selling prices of most of these consumer durable items are also down. And any change in mix from components to finished goods is that also a big factor because of capacity coming in at brand level? No. At our end, we have a balanced capacity. We are still focusing a lot more on the full product side. And as we have been telling in the past, we uh, we are still going to be focusing a lot more on the full product business. When I give you the numbers of product in the AC side or washing machine, they are the complete finished good products which we sell. We don't actually give the numbers on the component side and they are part of our plastic molding and other segment. We, when, when the product side is only the finished wood, final finished assembly which we are billing to the customer. Uh, sure, sir. Thanks for the response. I think that's all my major question. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Pranay Roop Chatterjee from Burman Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, good evening everyone. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Great. Uh, you are... so, uh, uh, firstly, a couple of uh, data related questions. Uh, can you provide the volumes of uh, RAC, IDU, ODU and washing machines that you did in Q3? That data we have stopped giving and we don't share for the competitive reason, actually, and we are sharing only the AC washing machine and uh, product business revenues only right now. So I'll tell you why I'm asking, uh, because uh, like you said, uh, uh, one, there was some sort of inventory correction, and then the ASP also went down, and hence your revenue is down, right? So uh, it's difficult to assess whether on volume terms you have grown, and hence, uh, in your Q4 guidance, uh, you have built around 40% growth uh, YOI in Q4 for the product business. Uh, if there is a ASP decline of around 8-10%, eight, that means you need upwards of 50% of volume growth uh, in Q4, right? Uh, on the last year Q4 base. So, no. Uh, basis, okay, yeah, please, please. The reason is this, that there is a new product line also which we are starting, which is the, the uh, window AC. And apart from that, we are also starting to manufacture the uh, having a manufacturing facility which is going to start production this month, uh, maybe in the second half, and uh, from next month there will be a ramp up. So there will be uh, a volume growth coming from the Bivadi facility also, which will be contributing for us. So uh, uh, the volume growth will be there, no doubt. Probably what you are saying about maybe 35, 40 percent in the existing product line and some uh, business will be also being contributed by the window AC. Perfect, sir. Got it. And, and these numbers I'm saying are after what we are seeing already in the terms of run rate in the month of January, February. Based on that numbers only we are giving you a guide. Got it. Understood. Yeah, that is all clear. Uh, uh, next, sir, uh, quickly again a detailed related question. Uh, in your Q4 guidance, you have guided for 100 CR of EBITDA. Uh, I think uh, in December or late last year, audits were going on in plants for the white goods PLI. So uh, that 15 CR PLI, is this uh, part of this 100 CR EBITDA? And if not, when do you expect it? We, we have submitted our application. Audits are completed at our end. There are some queries and uh, those are getting addressed by our team, accounting team, and we hope to get the PLI maybe in next 15 days to a month's time. And uh, 15 crore of that PLI is a part of this 100 crore. Got it, sir. Uh, next, uh, it's a more uh, high-level strategic question. Uh, now, when I look at your... PL, uh, when I look at PG's AC business, right, uh, obviously it's uh, scaled up uh, quite brilliantly over the last three years. Uh, but there, there seem to be a, quite a few factors that play uh, over the, when I look at it from a next two year perspective, right? So let's say if the RAC is growing at about 8-10% at an industry level, uh, what will happen is next two to three, three years, a chunk of the outsourced portion will sort of go in-house purely because they have invested, the OEMs have invested in capacity. Now, the numbers that I've heard is 40% uh, outsourced portion going to sub-30 already, and then it will further reduce as the remaining uh, OEMs actually move it in-house. So, uh, in uh, 
uh, uh, while this is at play, you are also expanding your market share uh, quite rapidly, historically at least, and you are focusing on CBUs and also targeting the long tail of OEMs in the RSE industry, like 40 plus brands who sell. So given this context and that you have also expanded your RSE in the in Diwali Rajasthan, uh, what kind of visibility do you have in FI25? Like, can we, uh, because there's a lot of dust and it's not clear, do you, can we expect a growth on FI24 base for your AC business or should we think of it more as a flattish year where we are trying to figure out uh, uh, what happens in terms of insourcing versus outsourcing? Coming to your question, uh, I do agree there is a capacity coming in the uh, brands themselves and there is a capacity which is coming in the competition also. Uh, we are quite optimistic, first of all, on the medium-term growth on the AC business segment. Yes, uh, I don't dispute the fact that next one year or one and a half year could be a little challenging as some of the outsourcing work may be shifting to in-house. But, you know, um, at the same time, I just want to highlight that stabilizing the operation and rapidly uh, uh, scaling up the operation is also not easy for all the brands which have not been in the manufacturing business themselves. So let us see how the scaling act up actually happens. That will decide the pace of outsourcing versus insourcing in the next one, one and a half year. I'm not saying it is not possible to scale up, but it's just that the hurdles will be there and how the companies are able to tackle, that will decide what happens next year and year after. Also, another thing which I want to highlight here is that, you know, given the fact that we are seeing uh, opportunities in the uh, side of, you know, uh, government's push and so many policies, we are very hopeful that probably there will be a period in the next five years where the growth in the AC segment will surprise and we will see a continuous growth of 20-25% for maybe five, six years because the penetration levels remain so low and affordability is increasing. Especially, I am very hopeful that once the electricity prices are relatively lower, these things will start picking up, uh, the penetration levels will start picking up very significantly. Also, I want to highlight that our cost competitiveness, uh, cost <coughs> leadership makes us a preferable partner for most of the companies who are looking to outsource. And we have been gaining market share, and if the market remains even stable, then we are hopeful that we will be able to show some growth even in 25. Got it, sir. Uh, and lastly, anything you would like to disclose on IT hardware PLI uh, in terms of uh, investments that you're planning to do, the orders that you might have got or, you know, in the pipeline, uh, any disclosure on that piece, yeah? We will uh, disclose those things as and when we have any uh, announcements to make. The efforts are on and team is working towards it. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. I'll get back to you. Ladies and gentlemen, please press star and one to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Praful Siddharth from Shravas Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Congrats on good set of numbers. So I just wanted to understand how much revenue did we generate from the plastic molding segment during the quarter. Just hold on for a minute. I'll just give you this figure. Sure. Uh, this quarter, plastic molding and others uh, was just hundred and uh, yeah, it was hundred and fifty one point seven crores. Got it, sir. Got it. Sure. And how much is it from the electronics and mount segment? Electronics was uh, totally about. Hundred and three point zero nine crores. Just and the molds? Pardon? Molds, molds. Molds was about one point seven two crores. Got it. Great, sir. Thank you so much. That's it for mine. Thank you.
Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Kaushik Mohan from Ashika Group. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, sir, uh, you, in the starting, you mentioned that uh, about the cash flows that you have made some international payments, and that's the reason there has been a stretch in your uh, cash flows. So, can I get some more clarity? How much discount are we getting because of this, or what kind of thought process we have that we have extended our cash flows? Please, please, please. Yeah. Yeah. There was a this cash flow that excess cash which we are having was lying in the fixed deposit and we are getting just about 7% interest on that. What we have done is there was a particular vendor with whom we were able to negotiate uh, for about uh, 3% kind of a discount and uh, on an advance payment basis rather than, you know, giving him a payment uh, afterwards. And that's why we... our payment terms with that vendor was 45 days. So for 45 days, uh, we have paid them uh, before shipment and we were able to take uh, cost advantage of 3%. So we saw it as a very significant uh, saving. So that's why we uh, went for that. Okay. And my sir, second uh, follow-up question is on, sir, how are we looking uh, the growth on RAC segment over next year? Any comment or any thought process that we have it? See, I will be able to give a lot more color on it once we actually are uh, meeting after the fourth quarter. By that time, we will have a much more clarity on the outsourcing plans of some of our clients. However, the order book that we have as of now till May, June looks pretty promising. And at least in the first half of the next year, which is uh, till June, we see a decent growth accruing to us if the season doesn't play a spoil sport again this year. Good. Good. Sir, and uh, you also mentioned that uh, we have we are going to get in 100 crore, 15 crore as a PLI amount. That means that this quarter uh, margins and everything were uh, all in, in line. Just because of the PLI, we will be getting a psych on the uh, EBITDA and the PAT level. Is my assumptions right? Yeah, you are right on that. But see, the, we don't actually uh, take the PLI uh, benefit till the time it actually comes to us or uh, our application was expect, uh, accepted. So this quarter, our application has been accepted and we are hoping the payout to come this quarter. So that's why we are actually delaying this uh, accruing of PLI to the quarter, this fourth quarter. Got it. That means that we are in a run rate of net profit of 100 crore this year. You cannot say run rate. Ours is a seasonal business, and you know, typically fourth and the first quarter of any financial year are the strongest period for us. And second and third quarter are typically a little weaker. Thanks. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Mahesh, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Super numbers. Uh, just wanted to understand this PLI side. I heard somewhere that of the 25 companies that applied for AC PLI, uh, and this was a few years ago, now just eight or nine companies are actually in a place to claim any uh, incentive at all because they have not been able to meet the objectives. So what has been our PLI experience and what do you see is is the competition also going to get incentives or not? Meaning, obviously, you can't know exactly, but what is what is your sense on this? So, uh, I think, you know, uh, one is that uh, the, the targets are getting challenging for everyone on an incremental basis because there is a growth which is required year on year to meet the PLI targets. And uh, next year, the challenges are going to be bigger because the the, the size or the amount of uh, targets are almost 50% higher than what they are this year on an incremental basis. Obviously, uh, some of the companies or the, uh, the competition or people who had a larger uh, revenues in the base year, they are at little disadvantage because of the fact that there are, uh, uh, they have to not only, first of all, do the numbers which they, they, they did in the base year, and now they have to actually meet these incremental targets also. 
Uh, I don't have the number of how many people are likely to get or not. I think there was a, a, a 21, 22 uh, companies which were totally there in the first phase in the, when they, they applied. Um, and uh, some of those must have fallen through because uh, the targets are stretched. And one thing was always that the investment and sales both needed to be done to meet the targets. And um, some of the companies are probably uh, not done the investment targets also uh, in the first phase, and uh, they have fallen apart. And now uh, the the sales will be obviously some challenging for some of the companies. Maybe I will further add to what Pramodji has said. So when this PLI scheme was announced and when we set up this company by name of PG Technoplast, which is a volume subsidiary of PG Electroplast, the basic, you know, the structure and the timing has been such that, you know, we are in the, one of the best positions to avail the benefits and take benefit of this PLI, the way this thing has been structured. And since for in our case, the baseline is virtually zero. So whatever sales we do is an incremental sale, and we are able to get benefits, PLI benefits on those sales. Whereas in case of the competition who have been in this business for last many years, so they already have some legacy or some baseline numbers which they have to cross every year. And the, on the top of that, they have to do incremental sales every year. And that also is increasing every year. So the challenges for them is very high. And that our customers also do understand. So they always prefer giving business to us because they, they know that some of that benefit, maybe we can share with them. Uh, are there any state uh, benefits due this financial year or next financial year over and above PLI? See, uh, in case of PG Tetroplast, our super factory in Maharashtra, so we, as you know, we already have a, I think you're aware of that or not, that we already have a mega project status from the government of Maharashtra. And we are hopeful to file our application in next two, three months. And in next financial year, year, we are targeting to get those benefits also from the state government of Maharashtra. Okay. Okay. And uh, one last question. Uh, clearly, meaning uh, we have seen uh, some of the larger competition results where the revenues have declined, whereas in our case, uh, both the uh, uh, revenues have grown for first nine months as well as for the fourth quarter, we are giving a guidance of growth again. So we are gaining uh, market share over our competition. And uh, as Pramod mentioned some time ago, that there seems uh, cost leadership is one of the drivers. What I want to understand broadly, without giving uh, any competitive information, uh, whether the fact that we are concentrated, as in we, most of our uh, AC manufacturing has been happening in Supa, only now we'll have another facility, has that played a role in our cost competitiveness? See, definitely. If you don't spread out very thin, you know, in our case, our facility is one location till now, and now we have one more location. Whereas, whereas in case of competition, they have factories maybe spread across 20 plus, you know, locations, and they have to meet similar numbers. We are doing similar numbers from 20 plus factories, and we are trying to achieve similar numbers from one or maybe now second unit. So definitely, the cost overhead and all those can be, you know, that can be. A, edge or an advantage, but we are always, you know, trying to achieve. Okay, okay. Okay, thanks a lot. So basically, the, it seems like the structurally, uh, PG has a cost advantage which cannot easily go away. That's my conclusion from uh, what you've said. Also, I want to highlight uh, that, you know, ours is a mostly organic growth. We do not have any legacy which is coming to us because of uh, inorganic uh, growth uh, or maybe other companies which have been acquired and so we do not have those challenges or uh, efficiency issues which some of our competition may be having because they have gone for many acquisitions in the past etc and we have a very focused team and a very small team uh, even in the middle and the top management which drives this whole business so uh, i mean uh, the kind of revenues we are doing from ac i mean uh, not many companies will be having this smaller team which can actually uh, drive this kind of revenues uh, in the ac business
ओके थैंक्स अ लॉट सर ऑल द बेस्ट थैंक यू participants who wish to ask questions may please press star and 1 the next question is from the line of pranay roop chatterjee from burman capital please go ahead sir two more uh, quick questions uh, firstly on your acquisition of amstrad's uh, contract manufacturer next gen i was looking at amstrad india's uh, annual report and they seem to have about 255 cr of revenue in fy23 and 217 cr of purchase of stock in trade in their cogs so is it fair to say that if they if this 200 cr is entirely outsourced uh, then that is what you can address uh, is that the right way to think about it and how quickly can we service this because this is like captive a semi captive sort of consumption right so there are two things basically the first part is with this facility what we have acquired which was a 100% owned subsidiary of Amstrad Consumer India Private Limited, which has a brand name by name of Amstrad, they had a manufacturing facility which was just across the road. It's a very new manufacturing facility which very well aligns and fits with our current operations in Supa and our current operations in Supa with the new factory being new factory building being made. Now we don't have any more land available for future expansion. so we thought that this being just across the road make lot of sense that we should acquire it's a 12 acre facility that was one part in addition to that to just to sweeten the whole deal you know the basic idea is they are into already branding of room air conditioners washing machines and led television so as a part of deal we will have a preferential treatment and a first right of refusal for any outsourcing opportunity for these products from this brand So, sir, any sense if they are outsourcing uh, part of that 200 crore uh, as of today? So, we are already doing some, maybe some part of that, uh, around 50 to 60 percent of that uh, is already doing, but we are targeting to be make it 100 percent and grow that further. Got it, sir. And lastly, uh, on the state incentive. uh could you just help us understand uh, i think you mentioned a 15 cr number in uh, one of the past earnings calls this year uh, that you will probably uh, recognize next year after you file the applications is that 15 cr number accurate and uh, is that a constant figure every year and how long will you get that for in just some of those call back numbers call back numbers no no 15 crores is not the right number the number in the first year is going to be much higher because when we file for an application typically we for the the past whatever numbers you have done you are also able to claim that for the past 2 3 years what went till from the time you have started the commercial production so that number is going to be more like 20 to 22 crore per year eligibility that is what we are expecting so in the first year we will be probably having eligibility uh, we will be uh, accruing the two Years numbers, or maybe slightly more than two years numbers. In the first year, the number is more likely to be more than forty to forty-five crores, or maybe slightly higher than that. And uh, basis, uh, reasonable assumptions, uh, and your plans of filing in two months from now. How does the timeline usually look like? Uh, when can we uh, reasonably accrue to our PNL? Reasonably. Yeah, you know, we have been in state of Maharashtra for last more than twelve years. so typically when you have your audit balance sheet and get your audit gst audit done which normally happens by september of you know next financial year so suppose by 31st march 2024 we are able to close our balance sheet get the audit done by april complete our gst audit in next 2 3 months and file our application so before closure of next financial year we should target to get this money from the state government of maharashtra uh, so but isn't this like 6 to 7% of sales that's the formula right no no it's not like that it's, you know the amount of capex you have done the eligible capex and it is divided by 12 years so that becomes your maximum amount eligible what you can get but in case in because we have a mega project theater we can avail a gross sgst uh, reimbursement from the state government of maharashtra so in case of rfp 
the gross SGST for room air condition is 14 percent. But you know, then there is a maximum cap. So you know, we will get maximum cap only because we will hit that cap very easily. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it, sir. Thank you. I'll get back to you. Thank you. Yeah, please. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Pulavarti Sai Kiran, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, am I audible? Yes, yes you are audible. Yeah. So, I'm just taking a step back, uh, if you have to look at it in the last three years or four years, primarily the growth has been driven by the room AC for the, the company and it has given fantastic set of results. And if we look forward for the next maybe three to five years, how do you see PG Electroplast shaping up uh, maybe both in terms of the product breakups and what are the initiatives which you guys are looking at? And probably with these initiatives, how the numbers might look like? Just your thoughts that you really have told. Thank you. See, please understand there's a clear focus from the government of India for Make in India. And government is giving all kinds of, you know, tariff and non-tariff support to promote manufacturing in India. And they want to really restrict imports into India. So all these are playing out as a very strong tailwind for our business. In addition to that, there is a good economic growth what India is experiencing, which is actually improving the purchasing power and the disposable income in the hands of the consumers, which will actually propel the growth of the consumption of consumer durables and consumer electronics in India. So, it's a, see, for, when you ask for a number for three to five years, I can give you very, uh, you know, general statement. We cannot give you any specific numbers on that, but we are very confident in the kind of, you know, policy environment what we have in India, the kind of economic environment we have in India. We have a, future, a good future for ourselves and for the country. And in terms of any specific product initiatives which you might want to enter, and probably some progress would have already gone in, either in terms of uh, thinking internally or maybe discussing with few other potential partners or something of that sort? We are always looking at all possible business opportunities. You know, uh, IT hardware PLI is one of them. That is what we are trying. We, are, we have re-entered LED television business. Where we can see, where we see that where we can offer a long-term and viable value proposition for our customers and where we think that we can acquire required capabilities and skill sets to sustain that business on a long-term basis, we will definitely go into any kind of product business. So as of now, we cannot give you any specific inputs on that, but as and when we will have something to share, we will definitely share with all our stakeholders. Got it. Uh, one last question from my side. Just like what you have uh, seen on the AC as an exponential growth for this company, any segments you foresee uh, for the next few years which can drive uh, such a substantial growth for this organization? That's it. Thank you. Sorry, you were not very clear or able to me. Uh, Pramoji, did you get this question? So this is, uh, right now, the uh, hardware PLI and uh, Television business is surely one thing which we we are expecting to show some uh, decent growth. Also, uh, post-election, we are very hopeful that there will be a lot of opportunities coming for uh, export and also some of the companies, uh, and some of our uh, clients which are looking at Make in India uh, initiatives <coughs> and uh, shifting out of China. So there will be opportunities in them. Those opportunities I cannot detail right now because they are in initial stages of discussion. But we are very hopeful that there will be some large opportunities for outsourcing coming with the existing and new clients, which we are in the process of discussion. And once something formalized, we will really detail. Thanks, also. Thanks, also, for this detailed reply. Thank you very much. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and 1 to ask question. The next question is from the line of Farooq Pandole from Avesta Fund Management LLP. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, congratulations on the strong numbers. Uh, my first question was, uh, 
relating to the component infrastructure in India and you know to what extent over the last couple of years has there been any change and from everything that you know in terms of the people you meet and the uh, and the and the sort of your interactions and uh, you know speaking with government etc cetera, etc cetera, what do you how do you see, see the development of this infrastructure over the next couple of years uh, specifically with relation to uh, depending on china what do you think uh, mr pandole that government is very clear that they have to promote local manufacturing in india but as usual you know now what government has done they have put up lot of quality control orders and they have mandated whatever goods are being imported into india they need to have bis certification and most of the chinese companies are not able to get bis certification for the finished products or component which they want to sell to india market so you know those imports are getting restricted and all the indian companies are kind of being compelled to either go for local manufacturing or have vendor development tie up with vendors who are ready to invest and grow and make those components in, in india i'll just give an example in case of room air conditioner you know the uh, the copper tube plant is coming up in india and i think next 2 3 months the commercial production will start the aluminum foil also which was not till now available in india that manufacturing will also start in next one or two quarters same the uh, motor guys are already expanding their facility in india compressor guys are expanding their facility in india so you know there is lot of factory happening as far as consumer devices are concerned and in case of consumer electronics you are also must be seeing lot of media articles that lot of action is happening at the semiconductor side both at side pcb side so you know lot of things are happening but you know it will take another 2 3 years for us to really evaluate the performance and the achievements of indian companies how well they uh, you know take up this opportunity take up this challenge and how they really make them ready to compete with these chinese companies in the last 3 years just want to sum up lot of development has happened at least in the consumer appliances side Uh, you know the cap- capacities have come in for different segments like motors compressors and now uh, uh, controllers are all getting assembled large, largely in india so lot of uh, assembly capacity as well as components capacity uh, is coming up and is in the process of getting ramped up we think that this will further uh, accelerate in coming years great uh, just related to that question um would would anything at all in the component space provide uh, opportunities for you in the future as a company to exploit and uh, my second question was just if you could give some clarity because i think uh, two of the previous participants asked the question about uh, ac growth uh, over the next year uh to which i i i got the got the sense that the answer was uh, sort of uh, opposite to those two questions unless i misunderstood so if you could just clarify uh, as we look forward to the next year uh, you know I, i know you can't be very specific uh, with numbers but if qualitatively you could address what is the opportunity for the next year as far as air conditioners are concerned Hey, surely first on your first question on the component side there are opportunities which are going to be there and we will participate in some of them uh, for local manufacturing as well as if possible export opportunities uh, and we are seeing interest from both the clients as well as some of the vendors existing vendors of ours as well as industry vendors who are looking for partnership in india for manufacturing those components or assembling those components in india however you know we have actually put up a very uh, stringent safeguard in terms of the asset terms that we require to do any business along with the margins so we are actually slightly cautious in taking up those opportunities because we don't want to get into the business where we do not make adequate return on capital so we things which will fit our 
model or return expectation we will surely pursue those opportunities and we are in discussion with some of the um, partners for the same in coming to the other thing about the the clarity on the business see i have a very significant visibility of the next 6 months which is till the june quarter and <coughs> Uh, because uh, they are the form orders which companies have given to us, and if uh, the rain or other thing doesn't play a spoil sport, we are very hopeful that even um, in the first half of next year the growth should be pretty decent for us. Now there are capacities coming, and there is a lot of noise about the capacities and expectations of some large clients who are putting up their. capacity and how that capacity ramps up how and what decisions they take whom with whom they take uh, to you know take the work out and shift to their own capacity is going to be actually deciding the fate of each individual company uh, fortunately for us we do not have a very high dependence on any single large client that is point number 1 point number 2 is we have been all the time trying to get more and more new clients added added and also expanding our relationship in each of the existing client and that has been driven driving our growth we want to continue with that strategy and we do know <coughs> that business is going to get difficult maybe but because the, the the brands also are facing a pricing challenge they will have to find out and they will have to work with the vendors who can give them a very price competitive solution and we actually stand the best chance among the among the among the the competition so we are very hopeful that given our cost structure given our uh, positioning in the market and the the pli uh, uh, advantage that we have we are uh, and the quality that we give and the solutions we are giving and now we are working towards product leadership we are the best placed company in the ac segment for partnering <laughs> and if there will be an opportunity in india then we should we will be having a very good chance to to continue to outsource uh, to become a outsourcing partner so i yeah, cannot I mean, actually yeah i would like to what uh, pramod ji has said right now mr pandole see we got into ac business only maybe two years back you know and in last two years uh, two things has happened very significant things has happened that we have grown this business very rapidly and at the same time we have been able to establish ourselves ourselves as a credible and a quality supplier to and a quality partner to all our customers so their comfort level is at a very uh, you know at a very different level now they are much more comfortable working with pg they are very well aware of the capabilities of pg so we don't see much challenge now see two years back we were totally new that was very challenging times for us but if we talk about today if we keep our heads down and we focus on the things what we are doing right now and we keep our focus there we keep ourselves grounded we don't see any challenge in growing this business further in spite of all the challenges what we have shared with you just to add just to add to what uh, mr pramod and mr vishal have said please understand definitely a condition has played a very large role in the growth of our company for last three years but nonetheless there are other product categories also like washing machines electronic plastic molding which are also growing so we feel that the our revenue is much better diversified as compared to other competitive players and we feel there will be a significant growth in other product categories as well so which will be able to help us in growing the company going forward thank you excellent that's great to hear uh, thanks very much and wish you all the very best for the coming quarters thank you and the next question is from the line of nikhil kanodia from philip please go ahead hello can i order line Yes, Nikhil. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I just wanted to know what is the cost difference between Indian manufacturing and versus China in comparison to China? In what? In what? In what? 
Actually, it's difficult to uh, say right now. See, the cost of manufacturing may not be very different. Maybe they may have an advantage of maybe one or two, three percent. But actually, what happens is right now the component ecosystem was largely there in China, and they had a huge advantage of economies of scale, and they were not paying any uh, money to you know get. on the logistic side to get the components from china uh, to india which we have to pay and uh, also there is a long lead time and then financing cost also adds up on those things so that advantage they are probably enjoying <clears throat> but that advantage is slowly going away because there is a manpower cost which is increasing very rapidly in china and also the finding the availability to uh, of labor to work in the shop floor is becoming challenges in the large uh, cities at least in the in in china so those kind of challenges they are facing but still i believe they may be having a overall advantage of about 5 to 10% uh, vis-a-vis indian manufacturer because of the availability of component local availability of component and also uh, the scale benefit that they have so sir this 5 to 10 benefit 5 to 10 percentage benefit is post the labor arbitrage which you have count which you have said just now right yes 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 See, about five percent or so is the cost on logistic itself that we may be paying in major of the major components that we are still importing from China, and and some of the raw material like copper we import, copper tubing that's also quite bulky. A lot of it is air actually. Similarly, the compressors, the motors, these things, they and the scales is very different in China. They are like making ten uh, times of what we sell right now in India. got it uh, sir uh, next question i think uh, uh, is that uh, any any plans to increase the rsc component business i know you answered this previously but i would like to uh, i would like to to elaborate more on whether you are planning to increase your component business and any plans for that See, definitely we are planning to increase our component any business you know any business where we are able to we are certain our own internal uh, you know benchmarks we have created for at any capital allocation you know if any business meets those required those benchmarks will be very aggressive on those businesses and will try to grow that business so we see by the grace of god we have a large team of people available with us so we are able to have focused approach in all product segments and that is why we are able to grow all product segment for last three years so yes for components also there is a very clear focus and there is a clear team available whenever any viable uh, business opportunities will be there will be definitely be very aggressive for that uh, answer one last question uh, how many customers are we having currently rsc and washing machines in rsc we will be probably servicing more than 25 brands this year similarly in washing machine uh, we will be having close to 25 brands which we will be servicing this year and this will increase to uh, any rough idea increase to we will be able to tell you only next year once we add and start getting order but this is as of this financial year i am talking 24 financial year so so as like we have added quite a few clients in both in our air conditioners and washing machine business in last uh, one or two quarters Okay, understood. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to management for closing comments. I'd like to thank all of you for taking and sparing your valuable time to come and participate in the call. Uh, we will like to also invite you to visit us uh, both in Noida, Bivadi now, and also in Supa. and uh, uh, see our facilities you can call me or you can contact uh, you know send uh, the email to our investor relations cell and we'll try to uh, accommodate you thank you very much on behalf of jm financial that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines <laughs>